Hello mate and welcome to Let's Code 4, this time it's personal. First things first, let's do a little test run of the code we've got so far because we haven't done it for a while, so we don't even know if this is going to work. So we've got the program loaded, hit our start button and see what happens. Right, so we've got a UI and as expected, because we don't have a character selected, we have an empty menu here. So let's change that, press Shift O. I've already tried, tried this once, selected equals zero exit out of that and now you can see because we've got a selected character we have a series of buttons available for us to click on which is great and when we hover over them it tells us what button we have it is selected because currently we've just got the default icon we haven't actually made those which is something we'll probably do in the subsequent videos to this one so we've got jenny selected and we're going to hit talk it says image to display so that's something we need to fix on it also says none in there but it says enjoyed that plus one affection charisma has slightly increased so stat change works affection change works we're referencing a label or a function which is returning none instead of the name so that's something we need to look at and we also need to change this where it says image to display because that shouldn't be doing that either and then we click on that and as you can see let's try clicking on something else workout didn't enjoy that minus one affection strength slightly increased so jenny obviously doesn't like uh, working out but our strength has increased so that's cool so it looks to me like everything's working intend as it's intended except for a couple of things that we need to check so let's close this down and we can come back into our source code so where we're referencing the player's name is who is selected and apparently that is not returning the value we want. So if we go into our classes file, we look at who is selected and indeed it is not because what we're getting is it's printing the character's name in our console, but it's returning a value of none, which is suboptimal. What we need to do is return the value of this as well. And that's no problem. We can just copy and paste that. Control C. If selected minus equals zero one, then it's going to say no character selected. So all we have to do is in here just say return that as well. And now if we run our code, when we click on something here, we say talk. Jenny enjoyed that plus one affection. Charisma has slightly increased. That's cool. Double check it on another label. Jenny enjoyed that. She enjoys talking and eating. So <laughs> I can't remember what um, what archetype I gave her, but she seems to be enjoying those things. She didn't enjoy whatever it was I just clicked on. Slightly decreased. So that's fine. So now we've got that bit working and now we've got to tackle this uh, image to display issue that we've got which is happening up here somewhere, image to display, blah, 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 blah. And then we're saying show image to display. So let's try show expression image to display and hide expression image to display with dissolve. This time when we run our code and we click on the button, we're getting an error, which is saying couldn't find file interactions default PNG. Now you might be thinking, oh my God, it's broken, but that's actually what we want to happen because this file doesn't exist yet. So rather than showing the placeholder image for a file, we now know that it's at least trying to reference the correct file. So all we have to do now is create those files. So based on the results of that test, we are now at the stage where we need to start creating graphical elements for our games, such as the characters and also the location backgrounds and maps and things like that and buttons. We need to start creating those. So I would recommend that once you complete this video, you start looking into creating your own custom buttons, your own custom backgrounds and so on, so that all of the things that we need are working correctly and we're able to test them. And if we look at our planning file, what we currently have is we have locations and NPCs. We have a character screen. We have a contextual menu. We need to keep working on those because there's going to be other things we need to do. Now, if you remember when we talked about stats originally, we had the special stats, you know, a la um, Fallout, but we don't need all of that. We can just work with the ones that we've got. So we can get rid of that one. Don't need that anymore. Don't need to reference a character screen or NPCs or locations anymore. NPC stats, affection, love, messages, schedule, lust. We've already done that. Actions to each character, which improves stats. New actions unlock when stats get high enough. 
That's something that we're going to look at probably further down the line as to unlocking the specific things dependent on where we get. Certain actions will have positive or negative effects depending on personality type. We can cross that one off because that is now done. Outfit will change based on stats. We've kind of done that, but we haven't actually done any rendering or drawing yet. So that's something we need to come back to. Player needs to be available to train their stats, something else that we have to work on. Yes, the stats increase when you practice them, but they only increase a very small amount. So we want the ability to be able to boost those up further by going to, like for example, going to the gym to train your fitness rather than just working out with someone, so on. We haven't looked at the narrative at all yet, so we haven't done that. Dialogue system, which when a character is selected, only shows dialogue options available as well as standard actions. Again, haven't looked at that yet. Cash, we have a cash variable, if I remember correctly. Let's have a look up here. Actually, we don't. Well, let's solve that one right now. Default, cash equals, and it's a tradition in my games to start off with seven bucks for well those of you who pay attention to popular culture probably get that reference now but when i first started no one had a clue delete that one buy gifts and buffs haven't done that yet some kind of decay we we're talking about your stats as in your energy um so let's do that as well let's create a new stat and we're going to call this one energy and this one is going to be a percentage so we'll start off with 100 and then different actions will utilize different amounts of energy that's cool and let's think about some other kind of stat actually no we'll come back to that one because what we essentially want to be able to do is limit the amount of things that the player can do in any one go otherwise they're just going to spam actions over and over again and we'll end up with um well it's just not going to be very productive is it so Something else that we need to add to our default interactions is that energy needs to decrease by a fixed amount and um, also we need to be able to adjust the time of day based on how long the interaction is going to take as well. Otherwise, they'll just stay in one place at one time, spam an action over and over again until they've maxed out all their stats. And obviously, we don't want the player to be able to do that because we want them to play our game. So we come back. Uh, some kind of decay so that's going to happen food and drink we can have um stats for those as well so we've got energy and food and drink so let's create those stats as well and we'll start off with a food of 100 and drink of 100 and then they will impact different aspects of the game as well and we can add loads and loads of stats if we want to. This is a stat management game as well as a dating sim. So managing these three stats is going to be the difference between uh, success and failure. Because we will have consequences dependent on um, whether or not the player try. You know, they won't be able to do certain actions if they don't have enough energy. And they potentially could die if they don't keep their food and drink stats high enough. And the food and drink stats could also affect how quickly the energy drains. So if a player is particularly dehydrated and they go for a swim, then they're going to be a lot more tired when they come out of the water than if they were well hydrated. So also things that we can look at. So I'm actually going to add a space in there just to separate those to remind us of what we're doing. So where we've got food and drink option or energy, which limits the rate of growth and adds some thoughts to planning the activity of each day, which is something that we've kind of just sort of semi-implemented but we actually need to put those values to good use some method of recovering those stats at the cost of time for example sleeping or napping time system with five times of day create default background which we haven't done yet default character png and interactions default png which we haven't done yet but we've achieved quite a lot so far and it only is going to it's only going to get better over the uh, course of the next few videos but what i'd strongly recommend you do at this point is start planning start thinking about the aesthetic of your game and how you actually want it to look because if you have a whole mixy blob of different styles of buttons it's going to look really weird so go into photoshop start drawing some ideas out and thinking about how you're going to make your game look and then in the next few videos we'll probably start creating some of the graphical elements of our game. 
Thanks very much for watching, guys. I hope you found that useful. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and I will see you in the next one. But until then, you take damn good care of yourselves, all right? Bye-bye.